Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my talk is going to be a little bit on the science part and the more technical part, which was discussed in the last. So uh, I'm Dhirendra Kumar, working at the NCAS, uh, University of Reading, and I have been working on the CGFI project on developing the high resolution loss model for European windstorm and what can be a better day uh, uh, for talking about storms when we have a forecasted storm tonight. Uh, this uh, storm loss model is being developed uh, in collaboration with uh, many people from the academia, as you, you may see listed here, but also from uh, insurance industry, uh, from people uh, with people from Cat Insight and Aeon. A uh, little bit about uh, Center for Greening Finance and in Investment, which is CJFI. Uh, this is a national center which has been established in 2021 uh, with an aim to accelerate the use of uh, climate and environmental data analytics uh, for financial institu institutions. And uh, uh, it, it kind of provides an opportunity for the UK to lead in greening the financial system and also supporting more and more uh, uh, green initiatives. And it also kind of facilitates the integration of geospatial data and uh, its analysis into financial theory and practice. And you can see on the right, there are multiple partners like University of Oxford, Gistel, uh, but then there are partners like Catapult and uh, Spatial Finance, etc. So a little bit about uh, European wind storms. We all are kind of familiar with that. These are associated with extra tropical cyclones. And uh, these are the second largest cause of global insured losses. Uh, as you can see in the graphics on the right, there are some of the examples how catastrophic damage it could cause. So the right, uh, the top rightmost picture, it shows some damage to the train tracks uh, in southern part of the England, Cornwall. Uh, the bottom uh, graphics, it shows some damage which was caused by the recent storm Eunice, which was in uh, 2022 February. And this is the picture taken post damage from the O2 Arena in London. And you may also have heard of uh, several historical storms like the Great Storm of uh, 1987, Storm Daria, etc. And these have uh, very much catastrophic impacts across different sectors like aviation, forestry, uh, infrastructure damage, agriculture, etc. So uh, some more background on the losses, how, how catastrophic uh, damage it could cause. So there is this diagram on the left, which, which shows that out of 4,810 4, loss events, the 44% of the contribution came from the meteorological storms uh, alone. And although the total fatalities, total number of fatalities caused by them are less, but if we talk in terms of the contribution to the overall losses across, across Europe, it kind of cause, it, it kind of contributes roughly 33%. But in the total insured losses, the contribution is approximately 64%, which is a huge number. And also, if we talk about the standalone events, the individual events, they have very large damage history. For example, the 1999 uh, windstorm Lothar, it kind of caused 10.6 billion euro of losses, which is, again, a very huge number. So the motivation behind this work, we, we know that the financial costs associated with these extremes are very large, and thus it is important to understand and model uh, the associated losses, uh, especially in the context of present and future climate variability. And most of the vendor loss models, which are there, uh, are either too complex, inaccessible, or proprietary, and those belong to the catastrophe modeling companies or the insurance companies. And if we happen to understand the present and future climate risk in terms of the financial damages, we have to have some sort of a loss model. And that's how we, uh, we, we, we took uh, uh, upon this work. And we are aiming to develop an open source windstorm loss model for understanding these risks uh, across different time scales. So this is our loss model framework. Uh, typical to a catastrophe model, there are three components. So the hazard component, the exposure component, uh, and the vulnerability components. So I'll go through these components uh, uh, 
uh, in, in a very brief manner. So hazard is something which causes the damage, right? So in this case, we are making use of the daily maxima wind cast from era five. And the exposure is being represented by whatever is going to be damaged. So exposure or, exposure or the portfolio is the location of, let's say, buildings and their values in this case. And then we kind of establish the relationship between the hazard and the, the, the damage it could cause to the individual properties. And we kind of calibrate uh, our total losses to 3 billion euro losses, which is quite standard because the long-term average uh, of total losses across Europe is 3 billion euros. And this is a very simple approach where we are using a single vulnerability curve or single damage curve across whole of the Europe, which is, which is a bit hypothetical because there is no available loss data uh, in the public domain over which we can develop multitude of uh, uh, vulnerability curves based on, let's say, lines of businesses or different countries. So finally, as, as I said, that we calibrate our losses to be 3 billion euros for the longer period of time, which is part of the calibration. And then we combine our hazard, uh, oh, sorry, exposure and vulnerability component uh, with hazard, and then we have the losses, and then we go on evaluating our model. So how Jasmine has helped. So the model is being developed on using the Jasmine platform and using Python. And uh, uh, it includes a lot of data set, very high resolution data set and working across different time scales, working across different spatial scales. So uh, we have been making use of the era 5 v analysis, then UKCP data set, which is just 12 kilometer resolution for a hundred years and then there are 12 ensemble members as well. So roughly 1200 years of data. And then there are exposure data set and land cover data sets, which go as a layer in my mo loss model. Uh, some brief results. So here is a diagram where we compare the uh, country-wise annual average losses for the period of our model run. And we had two different exposure data sets. So my, uh, my Model runs are LitPop and WVGDP as, as being shown here on the diagram. And the other bars on this diagram belong to different vendor model estimates, which I have taken for the sake of comparison. So talking about the European wide losses, what we see is uh, that there is a huge parcel of uncertainty if we compare different vendor models itself, which kind of relates to the fact that different vendor models have their different exposure data sets and they have a large event set to go into their model and they have different ways to represent the vulnerability. So we are not we are we are not considering it as a truth, but rather what what we want to see here is like where we stand with our very simple approach. And since we are calibrating to 3 billion euro losses, we kind of see that the European average losses are 3 billion euros. But if we look at the countrywide uh, disaggregation, what we find is there are differences at country level scale where we are doing quite well uh, and comparing quite well with uh, the vendor models over these countries uh, and Nordic countries. But there are overestimations over UK and Ireland, but underestimations over uh, the France and Germany. And this might be related to multiple factors. So one of the factors being the vulnerability curve, which we are taking uh, into account in our model. Uh, comparing individual events in our model. So uh, the, if it is clear, oh yes. So the red values uh, on each map for individual storms, uh, those belong to some sort of observations, which in this case is extreme wind storm catalog uh, estimated values. And the cyan color values is my model estimated losses. So what we find is for many of these storms, we are doing quite well, for example, uh, Storm Vivian, uh, Storm Daria as well, and many others like Storm Emma as well. But for few of them, we are heavily under underestimating. So, for example, if you have a look at the Great Storm of 1987, we are uh, very heavily underestimating with respect to what has been reported. This relates again to the fact that we have a single vulnerability vulnerability curve in our model, but also that. In the reanalysis products, the hazard footprint for these storms are not well represented. So uh, the take home message and the next step, uh, we have demonstrated that with, with a very simple approach, it is possible to model the windstorm losses. 
and uh, our model losses they compare well with the vendor model estimates and uh, we have we have in the beginning incorporated a, a very simple vulnerability module in our model and now there is a plan to represent vulnerability in a very detailed way like taking in, taking into account different lines of businesses so that to compensate for the biases we have in our model and then we also want to extend our study to understand future climate uh, losses using high resolution climate model projections from the ukcp 18 um, this once we finish the model development we are going to release it like as an open source model so it it might be hosted it will be hosted on the github so that's it from my side i'll stop here and if you have any questions comments and suggestions everything is welcome thank you Oh. Thanks. I'll just wait to see if anyone else asks before I jump in. Um, you talked about different bits of uncertainty, like uncertainty across the models and there's your, your vulnerability models and things. Um, how would you, have you thought about how you communicate that to the user of the information that you end up with? Oh, uh, can you say it again? Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, full disclosure. Um, I'm working on a project that's about how we communicate climate uncertainty, and climate portals, specifically for that data being used for things like risk assessment. And so, I'm interested in you as a person who's looking at stuff to do with risk. Mm. Um, have you thought about how you would go about communicating that sort of uncertainty to the End users of your products. Uh, well, we haven't explored it so far, but I mean, uh, there is a view of like handling uncertainty because we first want to understand what is the major driver of uncertainty uncertainty in the in our model. And so far, what we have understood is like it comes from the climate part. So, in the first step, what we are going to do is like we are going to make use of large ensemble of the model projections. And then we'll try to quantify the uncertainty there, and then we'll try to find a way to communicate that. But we haven't done it so far. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next talk.